So welcome to Valley View Baptist Church in North Ogden, Utah, and to our YouTube friends around the globe. As always, we were speaking of our exceeding abundantly able God, and I use the text from Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. As always, we must remember that faith defeats fear. Faith defeats stress. Faith defeats anxiety. Faith defeats discouragement. Faith defeats depression. Yes, God is still in the miracle business. Yes, God is still on his throne. Yes, God is still all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at the same time. And I see Marilyn back in the back. Welcome. She's down from Idaho to be with us uh, today, so that's that's super good. So anyway, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come now to present your word, pray that it go forth in the power of the Spirit, be received by that same power. I ask that, Lord, that you just speak through me, and may we be in tune with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, folks, I always try to come with a poem or a story. So uh, I have a poem I'd like to share with you. It's called Trusting God and Do the Right. It's written by N. McLeod. I'm not sure where it comes from, but uh, I don't want to take any credit. So even if I missed spelled his name, why it, he gets the credit. Okay, so trust in God and do the right. Courage, brother, do not stumble, though thy path be dark as night. There's a star to guide the humble, trust in God and do the right. Though the road be long and dreary and the end be out of sight, foot its bravery strong or weary, trust in God and do the right. Perish policy and cunning, perish all that fear the light, whether losing, whether winning, trust in God and do the right. Shun all forms of guilty passion, friends can look like angels bright. Heed no custom, school, or fashion, trust in God and do the right. Some will love thee, some will hate thee. Some will flatter, some will, will slight. Cease from man and look above thee, trust in God and do the right. Simple rule and safest guiding. Inward peace and shining light. Star upon our path abiding, trust in God and do the right. It's a real challenge to us, isn't it? Now, folks, uh, I, I think I'll take a couple minutes and read the back of the bulletin, because I think it's really appropriate. And I left my, my hooked up enough to get over here. Thank you. What a gathering. You know, if you notice, if you don't have a bulletin, there's some out on the, on the table in the fellowship hall. But the front of it is, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Okay? This is, what a gathering. It's awesome. I've read it several times in the process of printing the bulletin. On that bright and golden morning, when the Son of Man shall come, and the radiance of his glory we shall see, when from every clime and nation he shall call his people home, what a gathering of the ransom that will be. When the blessed 
who sleep in Jesus at his bidding shall arise from the silence of the grave and from the sea and with bodies all celestial they shall meet him in the skies. When our eyes behold the city and its many mansions bright and its river calm and restful flowing free, when the friends that death hath parted shall in bliss again unite, what a gathering and a greeting there will be. Oh, the King is surely coming and the time is drawing nigh when the blessed day of promise we shall see. Then the changing in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and forever in his presence we shall be. Credit to Fanny J. Uh, Crosby. It's a beautiful thought at this time because the rapture of the church draweth now. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And this amazing verse after, wherefore comfort one another with these words. There's comfort in what's coming. There's comfort in where we're going if we know, if we know Jesus. So trust in God and, and do the right. So my text is entitled Fearful, Fearful Sights in Heaven. And our text was Matthew 24, 37 through 42. I'll just read a couple of those verses and thank you, uh, <clears throat> Dick, for being lay leader, the men that took up the offering and Doug for leading the, the music. But in the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And so the surest, most certain thing in all the world is the actual literal second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of this age. Just as surely as he came to this earth the first time some 2,000 years ago, just so surely is he coming again. The same prophets who predicted his literal first coming also prophesied at the same time his literal second coming. The same infallible Holy Spirit who inspired these prophets to foretell his first coming also moved upon these same men at the same time to predict his second coming. His first coming was literal. He came a literal, a literal man, born of a literal mother, born in a literal stable, and was visited by literal shepherds and wise men. No one is foolish enough to deny the literal fulfillment of the events connected with his first coming. Yet people will argue away the prophecies of his second coming by trying to make them spiritual and thus get rid of the important teaching of the Word of God. The literalness of Christ's first coming demands the same for the second. The prophets, the promise, right after he left was, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I think I spoke on that the last week or two in, on Acts 1, 1 11. Well, in previous messages, we've seen a number of signs which Jesus gave to his disciples as he said on the Mount of Olives in answer to their questions concerning the right, the signs of his return. So 
We turn now to the parallel passage found in Luke 21. Dr. Luke repeats many of the signs given in the book of Matthew 24 and Mark 13, but adds a number of other signs often overlooked and not mentioned in Matthew and in Mark. He mentions in Luke 21, 11, certain occurrences in the heavens when he says, and the great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilences and fearful signs and great signs shall there be from heaven. So yes, there's some fearful sights in heaven that's gonna dictate what's gonna happen down here. So we need to be very much aware. Jesus said that these latter days would be characterized by fearful sights and great signs in the heavens. None of us, I'm sure, fail to see the reference to the many strange things which have been happening, especially of late, with all types of earthquakes, all types of storms, all types, types of tornadoes, every, everything, flash, floodings and lives taking in not only the USA, but all over, all over the world. I talked to friends of ours uh, just the other day that live down in uh, North Carolina. Pray for them and their, and their condition down there. So uh, Florida's just gone through some really heavy loss down there. So we need, we need to, to be very much in awareness of what's going on, but also in compassion toward those that are going through some difficult, difficult times. Uh, uh, so, man has already unlocked the secret of the atom. He's experimenting with cosmic energies, all of these different words that, that just seem to have a definition of power, destruction, determination. All these things are all around us today but we're safe in the hands of God, right, Janet, very much so. So we hear of flying saucers and, and all these uh, aliens and all that. I don't have the answer to it. All I can tell you is Jesus loves you and Jesus saves and Jesus has provided for you and, and for me. And we need him to get to the gates of heaven because there's only one door and you must open the door okay you must open the door man talks freely of uh, interplanetary travel and trips to the moon we got some we got a couple of astronauts that are still waiting to be brought brought home and I don't know how many days or months or years they've been in outer space, but see, man is imperfect, okay? God's perfect. Amen. God is the perfect one. And so, yes, they tell us of these lights are great meteors, but they're never found. Atomic bombs in the uh, years ago exploded, caused the light so intense that it lit up cities 400 miles from the blast. The light was seen in a fraction of a second. The rumble of explosion came many minutes later. Strange things indeed are happening in the heavens uh, today. We don't know what's out there, do we? But you know what? We know who's out there. We know who's out there. It's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There will be a new heaven and a new earth after the thousand year millennial reign and the seven year tribulation. So what God has planned, maybe he's building now, I don't know. All I know is God's in, still in charge. God's still the only God. 
God's still at work, God's still loving, he's still in control, and, and the plan of salvation is, is the same as it's been for thousands of years. It's the only plan, it's amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Yes. You and I, you and I were lost. But Jesus Christ, through his love, would accept your prayer of forgiveness and thanking him for dying on the cross for you. And you'd be on the road, the road to heaven, okay? All, the one road, one door, one savior, one plan, one, one word of God, so. So, well, our Lord Jesus Christ adds still more information in Luke and Luke 21, verse 25, when he says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Three additional signs are mentioned here. Distress of nations, perplexity of nations, unprecedented storms. First of all, notice the distress of nations. It's amazing that these three words were spoken over 2,000 years ago by our Savior. What better description could anyone give of the present international situation among the people of the world? the nations in distress seem to sum up the whole, the whole story. Some years ago, the world dreamed of one world. We hailed the United Nations as the solution of the problems of war and international relationships. Now we have two worlds, East and West, freedom and slavery, democracy and totalitarianism. No one has yet found an answer. The nations are distressed. There's no more distressed company of people today than the members of the United Nations and those in place of great authority as they seek for a solution which no one seems to be able to bring. Well, the Word of God's got an answer. Turn to me. Amen. Amen. I've got the answer. That's right. I've got the power. I've got the wisdom. Yeah. I've got the solution. And it's called amazing grace. Amazing grace. That's what it's all about. That's what's going to bring our eternity with Jesus Christ and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit together. It's, he's in charge. His plan, his plan. So we don't need to worry. We don't need to not have rest at night because of what's happened, happening. Just keep praying, keep your faith. Faith is important as I said earlier. Faith is what defeats, okay? So just think, think about that. Well, I, I kind of got a little perplexed when I saw that word in the scripture, uh, perplexed, because uh, it says, as I just read, distress of nations with perplexity. So I did just a little bit of, of, uh, of research uh, uh, about about that. And so, to be perplexed is to be without a solution or an answer. Okay, think about that now. That's the definition of perplexed. You think, you think the United Nations aren't in a perplexed situation? Okay, and so it's, there. It said, without a solution or an answer. There is no word in the English language which better describes the dilemma of our diplomats 
statesmen and leaders today. One says this, another suggests that, still another suggests something else. All these are sincere, but we believe with as widely different suggestions for a solution as it is possible for anyone to imagine. The Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> adds still more and says, the sea and the waves roaring. The past few years have been some of the most destructive storms and floods in our history. Even the weather seems to be perplexed. You may shrug off these things, you may ignore them, you may laugh at all of them, but let me remind you, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, spoken in all seriousness. Any one of these things by itself may not have much sacrifice or much significance and may be called coincidences. Taken together, however, they add up to the just one thing, the beginning of the fulfillment of the signs of the time. We are in the latter days. Amen. We are in the only thing that, that has to be done based on scriptures is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ in the air. As I've often said, he comes down, he calls us up. We meet halfway, okay? And then, then we go the rest of the way, full staff, all love, all people, everybody that knows Jesus Christ, the, the, the graves will be opened. And we will join Jesus Christ in the air. As I shared that verse for you at the beginning of, of my message. That's, that's going to happen, folks. That's, that's a sure thing. Uh, there's no question uh, about it. It's just a matter of when. And it could be any, t any time. So uh, it's, it's out there. The times and the prophecies and everything are completed with the exception of the rapture of the church. So I just want to lay those at your, at your heart. Uh, and so uh, these signs in Matthew, Mark, and Luke are signs of Christ's second coming at the close of the tribulation period. Since we confidently believe that the Lord Jesus will come for his church before the tribulation, it makes these signs even more significant. Some one has aptly said, signs are for the nation of Israel. God has given no signs to the church. Well, the Bible very definitely says that the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ and Christ crucified. That's my message from the Word of God. We preach Christ and Christ crucified. You can read that in 1 Corinthians 2, 22. All of this is true. It's very well to believe these things. But the fact that these are signs of his coming to the earth after the days of the Lord give particularly to the nation of Israel does not in any way prevent us from reading these signs. We need to know what's going on. We need to know what, what's happening. And, and so uh, Dr. DeHaan kind of described this in one of his message and I'd like to uh, share that uh, with you. He says, a sign along the road may not be for me at all, but I certainly can read it. I drive along the highway and I see a sign which reads, turn here for the boiler maker's picnic. I'm not a boiler maker and I'm not going to their picnic. I have no business there. This does not prevent me 
from reading the sign and knowing where and when the Boilermakers are going to come together for their picnic, so too with the signs of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ to the earth. Although you may insist that these signs are primarily for the translation period in Israel and will come about only after the church is raptured and point only to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, I do thank God that I can still read the sign and know how near we are to that day. Amen. And that's an interesting quote from Dr. Uh, Dr. D. D. Hahn. He was, he was, he, he was just a wonderful uh, pastor. He started the radio Bible uh, class and uh, when, when I met my wife uh, back in 1954, uh, I guess it was, uh, he was on the radio and, and Leah loved listening to him and she, uh, she insisted that I, that I embrace that. And I think I have uh, all the books he's written and, and everything, but uh, doctor, he was a medical doctor and then he, he found the Lord and he, he became uh, a director of radio Bible class out of uh, Michigan. But if you ever see one of his books, read it. <laughs> That's, uh, it it's, it's really uh, awesome. So, well folks, in, in the light of all this revelation of the Word of God and the events which today are pointing to the soon return of our precious Savior, how solemn we should be, how busy to make the most of every opportunity to witness for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Certainly, the Lord could not have made his word any plainer than he has. We've given a large number of signs which Jesus himself gave by which we might know how late it is on God's clock. So be aware of our time. I'm not surprised every morning I get up and turn the TV on and see what the news is. I, I don't expect anything beautiful and charming and all that. I'm just concerned of what it might be and what it might be to other people. But there's two words that I'll share with you. I know I should be finished here in a few minutes, but I want to share a couple things, and it's a repeat. But there's two words that I want to share with you that we, we need. We need to be prepared, and we need to be ready. Okay? Because the way to be prepared is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, the way to be ready is to walk close with God, okay? So I believe those two words are so important in these, these last, last days. Prepared to meet Jesus. That is the salvation experience. And then ready, the word says, any time. Are we aware of that? That doesn't upset me. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It doesn't cause me a loss of night's sleep. Other things do, but this doesn't. <laughs> so try a, a guy that's 91 years old trying to act like 39 years old to get a message uh, across. No, I, I miss a few nights sleep, but that doesn't interfere with being ready. Ready. If the Lord comes today, that would be wonderful. Hallelujah. You know? Yes. Because I wouldn't have started next week's message yet. So I'd just be able to say, Okay, Lord, who do you want me to give it to? And he says, oh, go over and talk to Matthew and Mark and go ahead and preach over there. Or, or, well, if you want to get in the Old Testament, why, 
take, take on Isaiah and we'll, we'll have an audience for you. So anyway, the point, the point being, I'm prepared and I'm ready. And it has nothing to do with me. Everything to do with Jesus Christ. Amen. I accepted him on the island of Okinawa in the Korean War as my savior. And I've loved every minute of it. Have I sinned? Absolutely. Do I ask forgiveness? Absolutely. Do I love the Lord? Yes. Did I have a, a successful marriage? Yes. Lee and I were married 59 years. We talked a lot about the 60th year, but you know what? We'll celebrate it up there. We'll celebrate it up there. Yes. So uh, some of you know new folks and, and that, uh, I'd be happy to share my history with you if you want just, just a, uh, a conversation, but I've been so blessed. So blessed. I, I couldn't thank the Lord enough for all that he's, he's done for me. Have we gone through difficult times? Yes, yes. So I, I won't take time to go through those things, but uh, I just want uh, to share this as we kind of wrap things up. We've kind of given you know, a large number of signs which Jesus himself gave by which we might know how late it is on God's clock. We cannot take these things lightly. We must take them seriously. There are many other indications besides these which are mentioned in the Word of God. One of the most profitable exercises for the child of God today is to search the scriptures and to see how near the coming of the Lord must truly be. One of these days, as Christians, we'll have to meet that Savior who gave his all for us, that we might have eternal life. We shall have to give an accounting to him, not only of how we have lived, but of how we have used the opportunities and talents entrusted to our cares. May the Lord grant us to heed the words of Scripture from 2 Peter 3, uh, 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you be in all holy conversation and godliness? Well, may the Lord grant us that when we he shall come, whether it be at noon or night, we may not be ashamed of his appearing, but may have an abundant entrance into the kingdom of light and of his eternal peace. Well, how do we get it? How do we, we get it? Let me go over here and it says, We've called them, I'm talking about the, the unsaved. If those of you who are unsaved only know, only knew how simple it is to be prepared for these awful days which lie ahead and which are so graphically described in the Word of God, you would not put it off another moment longer. God says, there are three things that you must recognize and do. First of all, there's an A, and then there's a B, and then there's a C. First of all, A, acknowledge that you are a sinner before him. Accept God's estimate and his description of your condition as he lays it down in the word of God. Without any good or righteousness of your own, admit and acknowledge that you're a sinner and cannot save yourself. That's the A of salvation. 
B, believe God's word. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that if you will turn to him, now he will save you. Not by feeling nor emotion, not by works nor by your own righteousness, but just by believing and receiving Christ. And then there's a C, and that's confessing with your mouth, for it said, if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And Romans 10, 9, do it, do it now, while there's time. We're not sure how much time there is. And I don't want to use the Lord as a, as a fire hose. I just want to share his love for you and the need for us to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's later than we think. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we share the word, my heart, my heart aches, Lord, for those that need Jesus Christ and haven't accepted him yet. So I pray for that. I pray if there be one here that's not born again, so to speak, that this would be their day of salvation. I pray for those that are listening all over the world through YouTube and and that. Oh, my friend, the ABC of salvation, it's, it's, it's acceptance, uh, it's belief, okay, and it's confession. So I, anyway, Lord, you, I just pray you touch hearts, and I pray for those listening. Just a very simple uh, exchange with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm a sinner. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be my savior. If you're in and sincerely do that, there's not one person in the scriptures in sincerity that rejected by God. He wants our love and you and I need him. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to share Jesus with others and commit them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that kind of concludes our message to YouTube land. We appreciate uh, you listening and being there. And if you'd love, love to hear from you, it's just Valley View Baptist Church Post Office Box 12653, Ogden, Utah, 84412. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, God bless you, and remember, God loves you so much. <laughs>